All right, everybody, stocks about the numbers. Welcome back. Quick update here on Hims and Hers Health, ticker symbol HIMS, listed here on the New York Stock Exchange. Stock closed 1653, down three cents, about two tenths of a percent on the day, looking flat after hours. We recently had earnings come out, and I understand that I'm about two weeks late now with these earnings. However, I was very curious personally to see how Hims was going to trade, what they were maybe going to try to do with it, and just how it was going to react a couple of weeks coming out of these numbers. Because technically, as you see, it was a beat, right? So there are a couple of levels that I'm keeping an eye on. And of course, we know that at any moment, a stock can sell off whether they kind of try to justify that action with a catalyst or if maybe it's simply just being hated on and people are just betting against it. But Hims and Hers Health obviously went on a really big run. This jumped on a lot of people's radars and I understand everyone started to get it trending on Reddit. Uh, again, if you recall, we initially looked at it like over here it was a couple of quarters back. They came out, they were kind of consistently growing the business. They came out with another nice beat. The stock popped up, looks like to about like the high 11s, 12s. And uh, I did an update video and I said, in my opinion, it's growing nicely. And if we looked at something as simple as the revenue to market cap comparison or the potential quote unquote actual kind of fair value of the business in comparison with at the time, you know, I don't know, it had like a two and a half billion market cap or something like around 3 billion. And I said, in my opinion, you know, there's definitely some room to grow up. And I said that I personally see this going to twenty twenty five dollars easily as long as they continue to grow and beat estimates. And again, we had another earnings beat and the stock kind of hung out for a little bit, then it started to pop up. And then right around here was the news that came out about the weight loss drugs, if you recall, that popped the stock up to the high teens and even getting it to the 20s. We had some profit taking, basically kind of back to where we were, the recent highs, as you see. And then we catapulted even higher, getting above 25 mid-year, right? So it basically hit my personal long-term price target just within a couple of months after we looked at it. But again, we had the catalyst of the news of the weight loss drugs. So then you can see we kind of topped out here. We did an update. I want to say it was like right around here on this drop on the news. Um, they were basically just kind of throwing salt on the story about the whole, you know, entering the weight loss drugs uh, space. And a lot of analysts were saying that. Uh, this could be an overreaction or it could potentially start to get rough ahead for hims and her, whatever. But basically you can see the stock sold off immediately on that news. A lot of people jumped in on that dip, brought the stock back up to 24. It looks like on about two separate occasions that we started to break down and sell off. So if you look here at this support level, this was after these earnings here, early May, you can see we were on the up and up, we had the big pop, and then if we connected the bottoms there, as you see with this trend line, we have the stock breaking below it and then starting to really pull back coming into these earnings. And if we look at these earnings, we can see we had a pretty nice beat on the EPS side and on the revenue side. Analysts were expecting four and a half cents a share, they posted six. Analysts were expecting 304.66 million they post 315.648 million. So nice beat on the top and bottom line there, beating revenue by almost 11 million or over three and a half percent. And what happened? As you see here, they brought the stock down, almost filling this gap, but not exactly filling the gap, which is technically kind of one of my small red flags saying that we could potentially pull back and fill that gap before it decides to bounce and go higher. So, of course, again, we know that a stock can sell off at any moment, whether it makes sense or not in the numbers, in the technicals, it doesn't matter. But as you see, going back to this longer support trend line, this is going from the bottom of this candle here, October 30th, 2023, coming up, connecting to the bottom of this candle, May 3rd, 2024, cutting across. And you can see that they brought it down below right after these earnings came out. <clears throat> and it was dancing around opening and closing right around this trend line, popping and dropping below it. But then you can see it tried to reclaim it, had a little rejection for a couple of days, big, uh, big green candle right back up to the trend line. And you can see even today, we open, we close right here at 1653, which is technically right below this trend line. So we're going to have to see if 
we actually break down below the trend line if we break up and start rallying above the trend line and get back bullish or if they just want to kind of ride it along the trend line here and just kind of slowly climb it up over the next couple of months we have to wait and see but in my opinion i just think it's a joke because as we always say the way i look at it is that men lie women lie numbers do not lie and it's funny <clears throat> Because this is a company that has been pretty consistent, and I can kind of compare it to another Wall Street Bets trending stock that I'm sure you all appreciate. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Palantir Technologies, right? PLTR. Now, PLTR recently came out with earnings, and of course, a couple of quarters ago, you know, they had uh, some slight misses and whatnot, but they have been pretty consistent, and they have been growing for the most part quarter over quarter, year over year, exactly like Hims and Hers Health has. And if we look at something like Palantir, you can see that the valuation is way, way up, right? The stock is now back above $30 a share and went on a massive run of about 50% after dipping after their recent earnings, which basically came out around the same day. And this is why I always say there has to be some sort of rules in place, right? There has to be some some sort of path, some sort of template to look at, to determine what stock should go up and what stock should go down. So again, I'm not necessarily beating up any Palantir shareholders or traders recently who made money, but again, if, if you want to try to justify the run-up in a company like Palantir, then you're basically acknowledging that something like hymns should be back up at $25, $30 a share. That's the way I'm looking at it. And what I liked about hymns, we have a market cap here, 3.6 billion, we'll call it. We're trading 200 times earnings. You can see, look at the EPS climbing consistently now over the last several quarters, coming in with nice beats the last three quarters in a row. If we look annually, the actual revenue and growth of the business is looking very nice, in my opinion, getting up to almost $900 million in revenue to close out 23. If we switch over quarterly, we can see now they went net income positive Q4 of 23. So now this is three quarters in a row that the company is now not only stay, you know, not only swung to net income positivity, but is maintaining it for the last three quarters. And you can see that the revenue here, 315 million, this time last year, 207. So we're seeing 40 plus, potentially 50% growth in revenue year over year from where we've come from, right? But a company like Palantir gets significantly rewarded. A company like Hims has a run-up, sells off on, on some quote-unquote negative news, earnings come out, and they're just as good as some other companies, and yet you can see that the stock just kind of flattens out and hangs out sideways. It's struggling to even get back above this support trend line when, in my opinion, it should be here, back above the 20-day, potentially looking to spike back up and reclaim where it was on this big uh, red candle, which, as you see, would be about 21 and a half. In my opinion, that's where this stock should be. This stock should easily be above $20 a share. And this is why, again, it goes back to my previous video, the end of June, when that article came out where I said, if, if they are potentially viewed as kind of a quote-unquote small threat to large pharma, the large pharma industry, then yeah, the short sellers are going to hit it, and they're going to try to make it seem like it's not as good as it really is. And uh, it was also the wording of an article that caught my attention as well, but let's look at some recent news here. Because again, these earnings came out about two weeks ago, but I wanted to show here, Telehearth firm, Hims and Hers, health rides high on demand for copycat, weight loss drugs amid supply shortages, right? Usually they're just called generics, and they do call them generics, but I, again, I feel, you know, to highlight the, the term copycat just raises an eyebrow in my opinion, but again, that's just me, that's just the way I'm looking at it. Known for offering compounded alternatives to popular GLP-1 weight loss treatments, seen its shares soar over 120% since August. The surge surpasses gains by industry giants Eli Lilly, LLY, and Novo Nordisk, which have climbed 67% and 44% respectively, right? So they can be up 40, 60, 70%. 
But of course, it has to be noted that Hims is even outperforming them. But as we know, based on our stock experience, yes, the larger cap companies will continue to kind of have that compounded growth and that compounded capital appreciation. But it's the up and comers, the smaller caps that move the most, right? So having it up percentage wise more than its large cap counterparts makes sense. But anyway, the startup's market cap under three and a half billion contrasts starkly with Eli Lilly's 876 billion and Novo's $443 billion valuations. Despite this disparity, the Financial Times noted that him stock rally highlights a lucrative market opportunity driven by explosive demand and supply shortages for drugs like Wigovi, Ozempic, and Zepbound. Hims, which initially focused on ED and hair loss treatments, recently expanded into GLP-1 offerings. That's what popped us initially. Company capitalized on the scarcity of these weight drugs by providing compound alternatives to pharmacy-produced copies that do not have FDA approval. Unlike generics, oh, okay. Compounded drugs are crafted by specialized pharmacies and are legally permissible when the original medication is in short supply. All right, my apologies. So that's, that's my mistake. I thought they were generics, but technically they're not generic. Its shares remain below the initial 10 price. Ba, ba, ba. Company begins selling a version of Wigovi. Hims further boosted investor confidence by acquiring a compound pharmacy to secure its supply chain. 199 a month compared to over 1,000 for the branded alternatives has driven customer interest, consumer interest. Of course, that makes sense. Uh, we spoke about hyperinflation and a lot of belt tightening. So if I can get, you know, very similar drugs for 200 a month instead of 1,000, yeah, I'd, I'd probably uh, consider making that change as well. However, safety can our legal battles loom large. Only known as Eli filed multiple lawsuits to curb the sale of compounded versions. Of course they did. Investors were also aware that might happen once brand shortage is resolved, potentially leaving him stock vulnerable to a sharp decline, right? Why would it be vulnerable to a sharp decline? Why would it be vulnerable to a sharp decline? Because if you recall, even before the announcement was made, the stock was basically at this level of like 15, 16, 17 it hit on its own merits. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is why sometimes I just get a little taken back from what these, these uh, articles actually say and how some people look and and interpret some of this information and and it's funny because i have people even in discord in the comment section and they'll look at something like this hims and hers right executive selling shares and they're like oh is this an issue look at that five million well again you go back the last couple of weeks and look at the news articles for palantir same thing happened same thing happened had a lot of insider selling recently but that stock continues to climb, right? And, and gets to these kind of overvalued valuations, in my opinion. And it can just continue to keep going, continue to hold. Look at this. Hims and hers maintained that hold by Deutsche Bank. Price target raised from 16 to 23. Deutsche Bank, I believe we can check it out with Palantir. I think Deutsche Bank currently has like a price target of like $9 on Palantir. And this is why I'm saying, again, in my opinion, something like that is could be viewed as severely overvalued, even though they're growing very nicely. And when you compare it to something like Hims and Hers, they're actually very similar. They both have cash on hand. They both have very little debt. <clears throat> they're both, uh, you know, consistently growing their revenue. They both recently swung to uh, net, uh, uh, net income positivity over the last couple of quarters. So it's very, very interesting. They even have a similar book value if we look at the, if we look at the fundamentals. So it's very, very interesting to me how one can be so rewarded and the other could kind of just be swept underneath the rug. And then when you try to, you know, question it, people always respond, oh, well, you know, you just don't understand or, you know, I, I, oh, look at the space that Palantir is in, you know, that's why. And, and it's, again, it's just laughable. And this is why I say, in my opinion, there has to be some sort of template. There has to be some sort of rules in place. If you're going to pump something like a PLTR off of A, B, and C reasons, well, then it should basically reflect the same way with another company. Unless their costs 
are, you know, five times as much and it's really eating into the profitability, you understand what I'm saying? Then in my opinion, they could, they should kind of be treated similarly. If you want to maybe tell me Palantir should be at a slightly higher multiple than Hymns because of all the turmoil happening overseas and that's kind of the space they're in. See, that's understandable. I, I can appreciate that argument. But to have Hymns not move when something like Palantir dropped to 21 after earnings and is now sitting at almost 33 over the same two-week period when they both reported earnings. This is why I say there, there has to be some sort of roadmap in place. And just because you own it cannot mean it is the exception to the rule and nothing applies to it, right? That's, that's the point I'm basically driving home here. But Deutsche Bank upping the price target here. Uh, price targets ranging from $13, which is just a couple of bucks below where we are, to as high as 30 which is almost 100% higher than where we are right now. And look at this Barron's article here. This is, uh, this is kind of what I wanted to note here because there was kind of certain terminology that took me back. Hold on, bear with me. While the FDA removed Eli Lilly's competing weight loss medicines upbound from its shortage list last week, most dosage versions of Wagovi remain in shortage. Novo has been investing heavily in meeting demand for Wagovi and Ozempic. Sold to treat type 2 diabetes, 4.1 billion U.S. plant announced in June, right? So, of course, you have to try to understand from a business perspective how they're thinking, right? 4 billion plus to build a plant here in the U.S. And now you have somebody like Hims coming out with technically not generic, but we know they're kind of generic drugs. And, uh, you know, they're seeing the increased demand. So, of course, if you were on the board of Novo, you'd say, hey, listen, we're reinvesting here. You know, we have four billion trying to build a plane here in the States. And, you know, meanwhile, you have these other people just kind of undercutting us, you know, do something about it. Take care of it. You know, you understand what I'm saying? I bet that phone call, in my opinion, was made. But, you know, don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole. The valuations of Lilly and Novo have ballooned in recent years amid investor enthusiasm for their GLP-1 weight loss and diabetes medicines. Right, so they can balloon, but him's doing something similar should supposedly kind of be punished. I feel like it is almost the implication I'm, I'm getting here from some of these articles. For the record, I do not have a position in hymns, so uh, you know, I know how it might sound, but you could throw that right out the window. That enthusiasm has yet to fade, it's both companies has conti have continued to report promising data on the drugs. Uh, ADR is up 26%, beating the S&P, which is up roughly 10%. There you go. Outperforming the entire, you know, major market index by two and a half times. But, uh, you know, they should get more and somebody like him should probably, you know, just hang back and not move too much. Uh, okay, we're reading. We're reading. Actually, this is not the article I was referring to. Hims and Hers Health, price target maintained with 18 a share by Piper Sandler. Here we go. Uh, days after a share price tumbled on fears that its ability to sell copycat weight loss shots might be very short-lived. But again, it's not an issue till it's an issue, Right? It's, it, it's not very short-lived until action is taken. And it, and it almost reminds me of something similar we saw with Fubo, right? Fubo, they were keeping down, selling it off, beating it up for like six, seven months. Because their growth might be very short-lived if that new uh, platform was launched, right? With Warner Brothers and Fox and, and whatever right? So they were beating that stock up for seven months because their, Fubo's growth could be viewed as short-lived if this competitor's app is launched against them. And now, of course, we just got the verdict and Fubo went from $1.30 to $2 just in the last two days, right? So it was all for, no, for nothing, really. Looking back now, of course, it's in hindsight. I understand we had to wait for the verdict, but I'm sure you can appreciate what I'm saying. Oh, these copycat weight loss shots might be very short-lived. Well, guess what? They're not until they are. So until they're literally given like a cease and desist letter or something like that, you can't bring them down for it, in my opinion. 
company which sells direct to consumer generic prescriptions started selling a copycat version of no one orders weight drug it said late monday and it bought a compounding pharmacy that could manufacture knockoff weight loss medicines uh expected to add a copycat version of zepbound to its offerings in the near future announcements project continued confidence uh regulatory loophole that enabled the plan appears to be closing right but it's not closed until it's closed investors on tuesday did not appear to be convinced shares of hims and hers were down 1.4 percent after beating earnings again 1.4 percent down after dropping as much as 7.1 percent in the morning Sello follows one that began last Thursday after Lilly's CEO said that the ZepBound would soon no longer be listed by the FDA as being in shortage. Well, that remains to be seen, right? Would soon be no longer listed. So until it's not listed as being in shortage, then it's technically in shortage. Right? So in my opinion, based on how I'm, I'm, I'm personally interpreting this, I really don't see any issue for him's and hers health and in the current moment, but yet the stock has not moved after beating earnings again. FDA rules allow certain compounding uh, pharmacies, such as him's and hers supplier BPI Labs, to manufacture copies of branded drugs when those drugs are unavailable due to a shortage. So there you go. Based off FDA rules, this company is doing nothing wrong and isn't in danger of anything. So, personally, I'm not understanding. The FDA removed the drug from the list on Friday. Novus Wagovi remains on the shortage list, meaning Hims and Hers can still sell its compounded version of that medicine. But Lily's unexpected progress in getting Zepbound off the shortage list raised worries that Novo might have similar success curtailing the Hims and Hers strategy. Very interesting. Midday on Tuesday, stock was trading 1759, which point shares closed. They didn't even sell compounded. Yep. Company reported first quarter revenues of 315.6 million, up 52% compared to the same quarter last year. And slightly ahead of the fact set. Look just look at that terminology. Up first of all, up 52% right so stock should be up in my opinion and slightly ahead of the fact set fact set consensus estimate of 304.7 slightly right key word slightly ahead it earned six cents a share in the second quarter of the year just ahead key word just ahead of the consensus estimate of four cents a share. So technically, you know, it, it shows on trading view they were estimating four and a half cents. Company posts six cents, so that's a 33% beat. Here it says four cents, company posts six cents, that would be a 50% beat, but it is just ahead of the consensus estimate of four cents per share, right? Now think back and compare it to something like Palantir. Palantir post, uh, at, you know, estimates are uh, whatever, eight cents a share, and they post just ahead and post nine cents a share, and it doesn't matter, right? The company's phenomenal. They can do no wrong. We got to pump it up to new highs. Hims and hers, it's been flat for two weeks, technically down, right? Because because their EPS numbers came in just ahead of the consensus estimate also raised its full year guidance what do we look for when a company reports earnings we look for did they beat eps did they beat on the revenue did the margins kind of at least remain the same not drop off too much did they happen to increase how about future quarterly uh revenue guidance are we still in range or maybe might be do we have some good news how about for the full year how's guidance for the full year well guess what it was 1.2 to 1.23 billion it is now 1.37 to 1.4 billion roughly 200 million from the low end 1.2 to 1.23 that is one sixth 
higher. Which is what? In percentage terms, that's one-sixth is what? Like 16.7%, I believe? So they just raised guidance by around 17% above what it was for the year. Stock isn't moving, right? I just want you to take note of this. Hims and hers implied that roughly $15 million of its quarterly revenues were attri attri attributable to GLP-1 weight loss medicines, including compounded semaglutide, its version of the Novo medicine. So all of this drama for, you know, being the quote-unquote main catalyst driving selling point for HIMS for not pumping them, and they just told you in the quarter, 15 million of that revenue came from this weight loss drug, which them bringing in over 300 million would translate to less than 5% of quarterly revenue. That's what all this hoopla is about. Think about that. That's what all this hoopla is about. Company revenue growth is up over 50% compared with this time last year. And less than 5% of that revenue is off of this GLP-1 weight loss medicine, which supposedly is in the spotlight and is the reason why Hims has been kind of selling off and has been very volatile and hasn't been holding steady and holding its value over the last couple of months, right? This whole story attached to it is for about 15 million of current revenue right now in this quarter. Laughable, in my opinion. Laughable. Uh, anal uh, analysts asked repeated questions. What would you do if it exited the shorted list? Company CEO said they will be able to continue to sell compounded semaglutide. I hope I'm saying that right. At personalized dosage levels. Right? So I guess if you're already locked in as a client, you can kind of keep getting your, your personal level, whether, whether it's on the short list or not, shortage list or not. Which, of course, you know, technically means they could maybe miss out on future revenue. But if you're already involved with them, you may not have to deal with any adversity getting your dosage. Compounding pharmacies are allowed to manufacture customized prescriptions for patients who cannot use the branded versions of a given medicine. For example, at dosage levels, the brand manufacturer does not supply. But it's not clear that hims and hers would see significant sales in customized prescriptions. Okay. Uh, quote, the call didn't answer our questions on the durability of GLP-1, where we view Hims's continued compounding activity as somewhat in question as we see how the personalized approach plays out. Remember, all of this is surrounding, is all gravitating and, and circulating around $15 million in revenue for this last quarter. Hampton Hurst said Monday were a concern, classified 503B compounding facility that allows them to manufacture and sell large quantities of compounded medicines. 503B facility can currently compound semaglutide while it is under shortage. Won't be able to do so when the drug is taken off the shortage list, right? But it's not off until it's off. Already, They already own a 501A compounder different category that can prepare prescriptions only for individual patients and that potentially could make the personalized dosage uh, doses the company appears to intend to sell if it leaves the shortage list company said on an investor call that 503b facility would improve its glp1 offerings in the near term and in the long term quote present additional opportunities across specialties right so they're Beating estimates, revenues climbing 30, 40, 50% from where it was last year. They're now net income positive for the last couple of years. This quote-unquote big issue that's affecting these this new revenue is less than 5% of the revenue they're bringing in. However, they're potentially setting themselves up for quote additional opportunities across specialties moving forward. So for all we know, this time next year, instead of doing $300 million, the company might be bringing in around a billion dollars in revenue. Who knows? Who knows? But again, when 
you know, uh, when, when certain, it, it just makes me laugh because when, a, you know, a certain trending stock reports something similar, whether they missed earnings by a mile or reported in line, it, it doesn't matter, right? Because everyone sees the supposed future growth and future potential, but not in this case of, I, of HIMS. Quote, clearly by acquiring, clearly by acquiring a 503B pharmacy, HIMS is planning for a long duration. We just need to know how that develops. Company said it would offer compounded uh, terzepatide, the Lilly drug sold under the brand name Zepbound. Zepbound is no longer in shortage, so HIMS and hers could sell only personalized dosages. It's just funny because, again, I feel like, you know, just some of this terminology and, and the way it's being viewed by, again, this is technically uh, according to Barron's.com here. This came out August 6th, right after earnings. And, and it, it, again, it was just the terminology that caught me off guard, really. And, um, again, it's, uh, you know, revenue up over 50% and it's like, not a big deal and it was just slightly ahead of the estimates and even the eps was just ahead of the estimates so you know again again increased full year uh revenue guidance from 1.2 million to almost 1.4 billion but it's just not good enough so this is why again you know i the article itself doesn't necessarily show us whether the future is going to be good, bad, or ugly for HIMS. I just wanted to point out certain terminologies that were used with something like HIMS. And if you look at similar reports after earnings come out on a stock like Palantir, no matter what happens, it's on the up and up. No matter what happens, it's growing like a weed and you should get involved. No matter what happens, price targets get raised. No matter what happens, that stock can do no wrong. But something else you might be looking at, like Soundhound or Hymns, those, you know, we have to be more stern about and we have to, you know, keep them down because they're supposed uh, negatives, you know, floating and, and hindering the growth of the stock. I'm sorry, I don't see it. I'm sorry, I don't see it. And off of this news... And off of them saying that, you know, they'll still be able to maintain personalized dosages for their clients and off of them upping that full year revenue guidance. I, I am not understanding why it even came down and was below this trend line. And that's why I'm saying here, in my opinion, it really should immediately come back up above this 20 day moving average, get back to the fib here of 19 and then pop back up to where it was before this sell off. And it really should go back to 20 plus. But if technical traders want to be sticklers, we can look here and we can see on this gap up, top left of the screen, the O, the H, the L, the C, the open, the high, the low, the close. You can see the high, 1467. We had the big flash crash here below the support trend line. Look at the low, 1475. Technically did not touch and fill that gap. Which means that if they want to, they can keep it here at the trend line and then eventually have it reject and drop down and fill that gap before they may be bouncing. And also, again, the book value of the company, which technically means if a stock, if a company went out of business, had to liquidate everything in its name and then pay it out to shareholders, both Hims and Palantir, because again, I, I know I used it kind of as a, a stock comparison, both of those companies have book values of like $1.70, $1.80, which means at any time, at any moment, both companies similarly can really start to sell up. And this is why, again, I drew out this other longer term support trend line, because should it drop all the way down to 880 here? Absolutely not, in my opinion. Can it drop to 880? The answer is yes. And it could also happen with Palantir. And that's why, again, I understand everyone's excited. Markets keep rallying. They're staying up. Your stocks are doing great. But again, markets are up almost 50% just under this administration, which I promise you does not happen. So if this uh, sell-off or rug pull, if you will, 
does eventually happen, then yeah, something like Hymns can take a big hit and drop back to single digits. Something like Palantir most definitely will take a big hit and drop back down, if not to initial IPO level, uh, you know, potentially even lower. But I just wanted to show some of the technicals here on Hymns because technically in the numbers, the company is looking great in my opinion. And we can see, again, coming in basically for the most part above estimates, we have assets outweighing liabilities. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, even comparing it to something like a Palantir that still, I believe, is holding about 500 mil in cash. If we look here, Palantir's cash has actually been trending kind of downward over the last couple of quarters, and we look at him trending upwards, right? So even though we're talking about different numbers, because Hims what, brought in a little less than a billion last year, and Palantir brought in like 2.2 billion or whatever it was, right? So their numbers are a little bit larger. But these companies, in my opinion, are very similar. Again, they both have assets outweighing liabilities. They're, they're both trending online. They're both, for the most part, consistently growing and coming in above analyst expectations, increasing their guidance moving forward. They're both basically viewed as bullish and have predominantly higher price targets on them. They both recently, just over the last couple of quarters, went and swung to net income profitability and have been maintaining it and holding it for the last couple of quarters. And the one thing that is the opposite almost is the fact that Hims and hers cash is consistently climbing quarter over quarter. And we can look at something like Palantir's that's actually kind of been dropping and has kind of just rebounded, I think, over this last quarter. And I understand there are, you know, a bunch of little intricacies that go into how a stock price moves up and down. I understand all of that. But they they are very comparable. They are. They both have equity kind of consistently increasing quarter over quarter, year over year, book value, book value slowly increasing for both companies. That's what I mean. They both have very little debt. They're both holding cash on hand. They're both consistent. They're both up in guidance. They both swung to positive over the last couple of quarters, right? So even though, again, I understand this is like health and, and Palantir is like software and, and defense. I understand they're different sectors. But again, you can appreciate where I'm coming from. We're at a similar stage of business for both of these companies, in my opinion. And the, and the main reason why I'm upset, again, is not necessarily because, oh, you know, Palantir's raging. I, you know, I'm upset I didn't get involved. That's not my angle here. My angle is, if Palantir is reacting this way since earnings, shouldn't Hims be acting the, reacting the same way? Right? That's the, that's the point I'm kind of trying to drive home here. But even if we look at the fair value of the company, I, I still personally really like it. And equity now up to $362 million, we'll call it. Look at the debt, $11 million, right? Drop in the bucket. Uh, so even if we subtract that, we're at like 350 million. If we come back to cash, look at that, 129 million now. This time last year, the company had 65, so they almost doubled the cash on hand over the last year. With revenue again up 52% now compared to then. 129 million, what was the number we were at? 350. So we add 129 and we're at... Uh, what 480 we're at 480 and now we come down here even if we use last year that would bring us to about 1.35 billion minus net income all right we'll call it 1.3 billion whatever 1.2 billion doesn't even matter market cap three six so the quote-unquote fair value of this business in my opinion is about 1.2 billion and they're currently trading about three times fair value in my eyes about three times fair value looking at last year's revenue we're trading a little over four times annual revenue okay now let's look at palantir if we look very similar look at the debt here 245 million 
right was slowly dropping jump back up here 258 million but again compared to the billions the company's bringing in it's a, a little bit more than drop in the bucket technically but it's not an issue really in my opinion right look at the cash though the cash has been steadily dropping right hims and hers cash was steadily climbing Growing nicely over the years, just like Hims. Growing nicely over the quarters, just like Hims. Maintaining profitability. Five hundred thirty-three million this time last year. Reported six seventy-eight. Is that phenomenal growth? You better bet your bottom dollar. Is it as much technically as Hims? No. And again, three and a half billion market cap. Seventy-two and a half billion market cap. So again, if you want to sit there and say Palantir should be at 32, 32 a share, well, then you're basically telling us that Hims should be at, you know, 30 a share as well. Assets outweighing liabilities. Oh, and again, this growth is what? About 20% in change year over year? Hims had 52% growth, right? Total equity, again, assets minus liabilities yields equity. Equity consistently increasing, got up to above $4 billion. Total debt, two fifty-eight. If we extract, uh, if we subtract that from equity, we're at about, yeah, we'll call it like $4 billion, three, three, nine. Look at last year. Company brought in two, two. So now we're at what, like $5 billion? Five billion in change, seventy-two point three eight billion market cap. See what I'm saying? Similar PEs as well, right? You you can't tell me oh Hims has a PE of two hundred, it's overvalued. You got Palantir here hitting highs, uh, PE hundred eighty eight. Look at the book value. Was a dollar seventy? Now it's one eighty one. Let's look at hymns again. Was a dollar sixty up to almost a dollar seventy? Right. So, so that's what I'm saying. Book value of Palantir right now one eighty one. Book value of hymns right now one sixty seven. Palantir up almost fifty percent since dipping after earnings, hitting new highs, trading whatever 13, 14 times fair value. Forget about revenue, right? They brought in two and a quarter billion in revenue last year. The market cap seventy two billion. So they're trading th you know thirty five times annual revenue. So again, if if Palantir is justified, then Hims is undervalued. This this is why again I said you can't just tout a position that you own just because it's climbing when it really can't really be justified when a company in a similar situation isn't seeing the same reaction and i understand again you know the profit margin sitting here four million i know palantir now is up to whatever you know 12 15 percent i understand they're more profitable but again, they brought in almost 700 million. Hims just broke above 300 million. And technically, they're growing faster. Again, revenue up over 50% year over year. Palantir revenue up about 20% year over year. And if we go back to Palantir, just for a second. And again, I know it seems like I'm hating on Palantir. I'm not. I'm just trying to draw a comparison for you. Sells off into earnings just like Hims. Comes out, beats on the top and bottom line. Tech, look, see? Reported nine cents off eight cents, and they act like it's a phenomenal beat, even though technically Hims beat by a larger margin. And even on the revenue side, basically the same beat. I, I think Hims beat by what? 3.6% in change? Palantir beats revenue estimates by 3.8% in change. And you also had hims upping their full year guidance, right? But as long as the CEO comes out and talks about 
AI, you're good to go. And I understand also, yeah, they had the partnership with Microsoft. So automatically, again, people just pu started pumping into the moon. Like, it's understandable. But also at the same time, what did he say? Look how many articles come out on this stock. Jeez. Maintain that neutral at Goldman Sachs. We could look at some of those price targets as well. But um, the unprecedented demand for AI, right? That's 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 what the CEO kept saying on this earnings call. It, we're just seeing unrelenting demand for AI. Well, guess what? Looks like there's unrelenting demand for him's and hers products and services as well, because revenue's up fifty-two percent year over year. That that's what grinds my gears, right? If we're going to call it like we see it, and we're going to reward one company for X, then another company has to be rewarded for X as well. It can't just be because it's more popular on Reddit, or you own this one, you don't own the other one, so they're not the same, right? That That's why I always say, let's cut the BS, let's cut the nonsense, we have to call it like we see it. And if you think this is justified then you basically just agreed that hymns should be 27 28 31 dollars a share also also and again if we double that we're talking about what a 7 billion dollar valuation on hymns market cap right now is about 358 or whatever so if we double that we're talking a 7 1 billion what we say the fair value of the business was maybe uh, you know like 1.2 billion That's still, what, five and a half times fair value. Palantir would still be trading at a higher valuation multiple when compared to hymns. And that's if we double hymns right now from this level. Think about that. This is why I said, in my opinion, it looks like hymns I would be buying on the dips. And, uh, you know, again, something like Palantir, they want to keep pumping it to the moon. That's entirely their own prerogative. And I know it's it's hard to bet against these trending Wall Street bet stocks, but if you really believe Palantir is worth $72.5 billion, I, I don't know. Again, unfortunately, in, in my opinion, I would have to disagree with you. I would have to disagree with you. And believe it or not, this pullback here to this trend line, in my opinion, made sense. But, of course, it technically did beat, so it shouldn't have dropped below that trend line. And, again, you're seeing a big bounce. And then we had the news of Microsoft that helped add to the drive to new highs. So, if we can bring Palantir down, look at this, 21.23. Now, it's at 32.32. So, it rallied 50% after dipping on earnings, and then immediately started to climb up out of it. And you go back to something like Hymns, and look, came down, tried to go up, uh, and then immediately sold off, broke below the support trend line, can't reclaim it, rejected, rejected, started to sell off, came right back up to it, hung out at it, closed 1653 below support, technically rejected. Explain that to me. Because in my eyes, it makes no sense. So yeah, overall, in my opinion, um, I think this is a joke. I think personally, hymns, as I said, should be back up here at least, at minimum, minimum, if not here. And um, it, it looks great in both the short and the long term, in my opinion. And I like it here at 16. If they if they pull it back to the gap fill, 1470, I'd like it. If they pull it back here, I'd I'd like it. If they trade, you know, tr bring it all the way down here, but no news has hit, no, nothing changed in the business. I would absolutely 100% be buying this whole way down. This is not financial advice. This is just my opinion. In my opinion, I would be buying all of this. But let's switch over to stock charts real quick. I'll let you go. I've probably been speaking for, what, 45 minutes? This video is way too long. But we can see that the MACD curling back towards the upside looks like it's potentially getting ready to cross. In my opinion, it absolutely should. 
uh, we could maybe see it slowly ride up that trend line, come back to the mid Bollinger Band here of about 18. Then if markets really start to sell off, they could try to retest it down here on the 200 day. Right now it's at 1380, but it's been slowly climbing. So that might get to about 14. So we could potentially see maybe about 14 and change, which could incidentally kind of line up with that gap fill. And then we can come down and then just bounce it, right? Only time will tell, but in my opinion, should definitely be here. It should be 20 plus RSI sub 40 on the daily has room to run here on the weekly RSI middle of the road. And again, I understand, oh, it was overbought. You want to pull it back a little bit. But remember, only, only a stock like him's and hers is overbought, right? When I point out a high RSI on something like a Palantir, I'm a hater. When I point out high RSI on something like ASTS, I'm a hater. I don't know what I'm talking about. When HIMS gets up above that benchmark, it topped out. We have to sell it off, right? So again, this is this is what I mean. Everything you own, everything that's trending cannot be the exception to the rule. There has to be some sort of roadmap, some sort of rules in place. But you can see, look at that. Looks like it's potentially getting ready to reject off of that mid Bollinger Band here, 1745. 50 day moving average on the pullback on the weekly 12 and a half, but it's been climbing. So that might get to around 13. So if they really want to beat it up, they could drop it between that 13, 14 range and have a test and break those moving averages and then potentially start to bounce it up. I mean, I'm only saying that that negative move can happen because we haven't seen a positive reaction off of these numbers, which in my eyes, again, is just a joke. But you can see just from March, April, look at that bottom Bollinger Band, sub $5. Now it's at almost 10 So we are on the up and up. And this is why I'm saying now we could potentially see the bottom of the bottoms here back to single digits. But man, if if they didn't lose their business or you get, you know get sued or something, unless something negative and big hits the tape, in my opinion, I'd be a buyer all over this. We can see the MACD cross to the downside. It's been helping it sell off a little bit. Let's check the pivot points real quick. I'll let you go. And we can see we're sitting right at this level of about 1565, which apparently we tested for multiple weeks since earnings came out, even though it was a phenomenal beat. We're sitting here hanging out at around that support level now. And we can also see this level as well 1631 apparently fighting to be held rejected multiple multiple times on this 1631 technically we're above it but again we are technically below this trend line here so I'm curious to see what happens but uh in my opinion technically this thing should pop uh i mean this this should pop like 10 percent and it should like immediately come back up to this level here of about 1878, in my opinion. And again, get back to that moving average. Um, I think this is a joke. And if you disagree and you think it should drop down to whatever, 13, 12, hey, listen, that's fine. You're entitled to your own opinion. Of course, I'd love to hear that viewpoint. If you can, drop it in the comment section. Very curious to hear how you all feel about hymns and uh, recent price action and especially how it reacted coming out of that earnings report. But uh, again, in my opinion, I'm, I'm really not seeing this. And this little sideways downward action right here should really curl and pop right back up to where it was, in my opinion. Because uh, technically, the company is doing very well and they're growing nicely and uh, was a good uh, earnings report and full year guidance increased. I, I mean, you really can't ask for much more unless the company also announced uh, they're doing like a stock buyback. I mean, you know, that would really only be like that extra positive catalyst to kind of pile on top of this already uh, formed Sunday, if you will. Right. So sometimes you got to take the whole Sunday and you can't be greedy and look for the cherry as well. Right. But in my opinion, uh, if something like Palantir is moving like that, him's and hers should absolutely if you don't want to bring it up to the same level, same valuation. All right, fine. But it should absolutely be back here, uh, 20 plus, back to where it was uh, just a couple of months ago. And again, unless you, unless you shorted the stock or unless you own the competitors like Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk, chances are you're probably in agreement with me, right? But um, 
again, uh, you know, I understand. I know a lot of you like Palantir, and anytime I say I think it's overvalued, the video gets dislikes and whatnot. So, you know, I understand you're very defensive of your Palantir, and I get it. But again, at the same time, we have to call it like we see it. And, you know, it, 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 it can't be that whole motto, like, you know, rules for thee, but not for me. Like, you understand what I'm saying? We, we have to be realistic at all times so we can understand what can potentially happen. So a year from now, in my opinion, hymns can be 30, 35, maybe $40 a share. If Palantir continues to grow its revenue, but doesn't move and stays at $30 for the next 12, 18 straight months before it tries to go higher, in my opinion, that would make 110% sense to me because it's already too high. And again, if the only way you would really disagree with me is if you own Palantir. Because a company that makes $2 billion a year isn't worth $73 billion. I mean, that that's more like simple logic and common sense. But again, that's just me. That's just me. But I spoke for way too long. So after all that is said and done, I'm going to end it here. Oh, but also, wait, 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 wait. Because we had, um, yeah, I just want to show again, price target increased Deutsche Bank from uh, 23 to 16. And was there anyone else who raised their price target? Right, 18, Piper Sandler, stock sitting here 16 and a half. Uh, we're reading, we're reading, beats estimates, beats estimates. adjusted EBITDA, look at that, was 10.6, now uh, we're approaching 40, right, it's just not good enough, it's just not good enough, gross margin percentage of 82% dropped to 81%, uh, you know, that that's what I mean, like, if this is your reason to justify this movement, I'm, I'm laughing at you, in my opinion, I'm laughing at you, substantial increase in its subscriber base, right, we always talk, oh, it's all about the, the subs, it's all about the clients, Grew to 1.9 million, up 43% year over year. Monthly online revenue per average user increased 8%. Average order rose 27% to now over $120 a share, raising full year guidance. This is what I mean. I, To me, it's making no sense. But yeah, we don't have a lot of price target uh, updates but, you know, look at how bullish the, the articles and the headlines are for something like Palantir. Again, in my opinion, consistently growing, um, you know, the rebound after the sell-off, after earnings, understandable news about Microsoft. That, that's what I mean, right? It's, it's kind of understandable, but it's still overvalued. And even here at this level, after running 50% after earnings, it's still labeled as an outstanding growth stock to buy it under 40. It just amazes me. Look, Palantir sort of 400% and why breaking the $30 barrier could single could signal even greater gains. Now just remember again, I just want to throw out there a little disclaimer. When a stock is this overvalued, I said in my opinion moving forward, even if they beat the stock could go down and even if they continue to beat, the stock could stay flat for a year or two before going higher. And that's why if we really sell off, this can go from 32 down to 22 down to 12. And it might still be viewed as fair valued at that level. And I always say to be careful when stocks really run and they still kind of tout them as winners. Because if you buy here at 32 and, and everything pulls back and all of a sudden the stock's at like 13 again guess what? You're going to be holding for a while before that rebounds. I just want you to keep that in mind. But I'm wanting to see, look, everyone weighs in. Is it a buy on the Microsoft partnership? Mm, look, 56% of Benzinga readers see potential. Pick Palantir stock to outperform. 
And again, look, insider selling, just like hymns. More than hymns. There you go, seven and a half mil. Just dump some shares real quick. But it's okay, it's not an issue, because we just keep going higher. There was price targets. But, again, they put out 18 articles every day for this stock, so. Potential game change. Nothing. Oh, Wedbush maintains outperform rating a $38 price target. Well, at this pace, it'll get there next week, so he'll look like a champion. Uh, Eli, look, Eli Lilly. It's funny, right? We just looked at hymns. Eli Lilly shares soar after Q2B. Full year guidance raised. Well, isn't that what hymns just did? Stock went down. Maintain that neutral Goldman from 14 to 16. which would cut the valuation in half, which would bring the market cap from 72 billion down to 36 billion. And again, the company did 2.2 billion in revenue the year before. And that would be a 50% drop and it would still be a $36 billion company. I don't see many other changes for price targets yeah sorry i know i just went on for like another 10 minutes but i just wanted to double check any price target updates but whatever you can appreciate the points i made and we'll come back on hymns again look at that look at that bounce look at that growth look at that drop look at look at that silence Look at that rejection. So that's it. I'm going to end it there. So once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you so much for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comments section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Thumbs up algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel. That is our handshake agreement. That is how you help me help you. But more importantly, moving forward, like I always say, I understand that markets are rocky, they're volatile, they're very uncertain. So I want to wish all of you success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.